This is something that people should be allowed to try for. You know, you shouldn't just shit on them right away and go, oh, you think you're special, hey? Oh, you think you could be the next Beatles? Like, oh, you think you could be the next Elvis Presley, bro? Like, you think you're so great? It's like, no, 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 I'm not, nobody's saying that. Like, anybody with a half a brain knows that humility is where it's at. You want to be real with yourself about what you really are, you know, and how much you have to grow. But like I was saying before, like I... I set out to be it when I was first just picking up drumsticks. Like my thoughts were, if I just stick with this for the rest of my life and I, I never thought I'll actually get there, but I was like, my goal should be like necrophagist level drumming, Hans Grossman, crazy ass machine gun blasts and like technicality and jazz and just amazing drummer. That's what I want to be like. I never said I want to be just as good as John Bonham. Like, you know, John Bonham's great and he's, he has style not to, not to take away from it. But I feel like I could probably pull off a lot of the things John Bonham is doing now. But that's, to me, I don't want to stop there. I want to go for a crazy technicality in my head, right? And just, anyway, I'm rambling. But the point is, basically, I don't want to limit myself in my whole life where I might end up at, at a skill. Like, why not say that you're going for the best? You know, I want to be the best at it kind of thing. I don't know. I'm rambling, but I'm trying to organize my thoughts here, but... Basically, I just what when someone says they want to go for something great and be the best at it or whatever, a lot of fr their friends' reaction will be to be like, you know, oh, don't get a big head or whatever, you know, like make sure that you stay humble and everything, and they'll try to knock them down a peg. But a lot of those friends aren't doing anything. A lot of those friends, it's very easy for them to sit back and say, oh, no, 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 remember that you're normal like us, you know. But there's people out there who are fantastic that just don't even try because a lot of people just say, no, 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 let's remember who that we're all normal here. We don't play guitars and sing and stuff like we, you know, we don't do that. Yeah, imagine, imagine somebody says, you know what? I, I'm more inclined to do poetry and stuff like that at school. And I'm getting all A's in my English classes and stuff. But mom and dad, I don't know. I just, I think I really want to be a doctor. I think I really want to try to be a, a heart surgeon. You know, do they, do they then say like, oh, Timmy, <laughs> You should just slow down. Maybe try to go to med school first. Maybe, maybe just, maybe you could be, uh, you know, like a massage therapist, or uh, maybe you could try to, 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 maybe don't be a rocket surgeon. You know, like you know what I mean. Like, no, no parent does that. If their parent wants to produce, uh, pursue something academically amazing, they usually will push them to try and do that, even if they think inside their heart of hearts, ah, oh, maybe he doesn't have it. What it takes to be, you know, but they'll probably try to push them. Whereas I feel like most people are like, you know, the kid's like, I want to be a master violinist, mom and dad. They're like, oh, oh, Timmy, you know, uh, that's a really tough, tough path. And not really many people make it. It's like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, some kids, it's like, dad, I want to be in the NHL. It's like, well, we're going to try and push for you to get in the NHL. It's like, but, you know, if they say, dad. I want to be a rapper. You what? <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I'm rambling, but that's the point. It's uh, it's Sunday morning. I haven't let Dylan get a word in edgewise, and I think I'm about to. My uh, grandpa died this morning. No, he didn't. 100%. Oh, I'm sorry. And I want to dedicate this episode to uh, my grandpa, Jerry. I'm named after him. Uh, well, my middle name is after him. Um... Yeah, I just wanted to start off. These are my friends. There's a podcast in the woods with dedicating to my grandpa, Jerry Hoffman. He was, uh, he was a goat grandpa for sure. But anyways, I just want to start off with that. Damn, dude. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's all good. I'm not trying to make like light of the situation, but I think the contrast is pretty good there. That was awesome. That was our intro. And uh, yeah, I no. haven't seen him. He's in peace now. No, no, we're starting there. <laughs> No, that is that no. is prime, dude. No. That is prime. I was no. waiting for that so hard. <laughs> you are such a weenie. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm gonna get baked and just ramble for like seven hours straight, and I'll purposely not let Dylan say anything as kind of a joke, and then, and and then that, yeah, cool. And then boo does. Okay, so here's the drum. No joke. <laughs> <sighs> How are you doing, Life's man? Life's funny, man. Life's I'm doing funny. doing like shit, bro. Yeah. Doing real bad. Doing real bad. I just bad. got some bad news about your grandpa. Yeah. No, he was he's in peace now. And one of the things that like actually was kind of weird, because I didn't know the level. Of, I haven't seen him in probably 10 years because he lives in the interior. But one of the things that like like weirdly gives you kind of like, 
I don't know, like a, a, a glass half full perspective of the whole thing of death and stuff like that is I, uh, a guy that I'm not going to name that I work with. His brother got into a huge oh, car Jeremy? accident. Yeah, Jeremy. Oh. Right. Uh, he His brother got into a huge car accident and like literally believed, like he was in a coma for a month. Oh. Like messed up, like shattered everything in his body and stuff like oh, that, like man. totally messed up. And he literally believed that he died and came back and i i can't remember if he actually did die and come back or whatever but he felt feels like he did die and come back and he says he felt like he lived five lives in that one month of coma like he said he he, he was a native in like 1886 and he had a whole family he knew all his kids name and then he had a different life in saudi arabia he said he felt like he lived five different lives so he totally believes in reincarnation now if you were a Native man in 1886, you wouldn't know what year it was. Or you would think it was I mean, a different year. Yeah. Or you... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm just saying. Yeah. But, but he... So he bleeds... He but stands anyway. up, like, from his fishing. He's like, I think it's 1886. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they could figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they had technology. Christ died this long ago, whoever yeah. that is. Yeah, whoever that guy was. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. But anyways, so, like... Anyway, so he said he felt like he lived five lives. And then he said he felt like... because. He has a lot of issues, this guy. It's uh, like anger issues, drinking issues, just he's mental issues and stuff like that. But now it's like tenfold because major head trauma. But he said he felt like uh, when he when all that ha- happened at the beginning, he said he just felt him go up into blackness and nothingness. And he said he never felt more at peace. And now he's not afraid of death. And he just said he literally felt like he just like everything was gone. And it's like the peaceful thing. So anyways. I was literally told about that like four days ago. So it's like one of those things where my grandpa wasn't doing too well. He was 89. So he lived a long life. You got to give give props to 89. You know what I mean? That's a pretty decently long life. And then, yeah, he wasn't wasn't doing too hot. And now he's at peace. So anyways, this is dedicated to you, Jerry. All right. Dedicated yeah. to Dylan's grandpa, Jerry. Right. Respect. Respect. Mad respect. There's so. a lot of opportunities for creative people right now, and we're not really taking advantage, you and I, of a lot of them yet. We're going to try to figure it out a little bit more, but like right now, I feel like we're doing a lot of creating and not a lot of benefiting from it necessarily, yeah. which a lot of people do. And, you know, that's just part of it is trying to trying to figure out the business aspect of it if you want to go down that route, like doing a job like media, like you would like to do as a videographer, you know, yeah. as a camera guy or a director or whatever it is that you want to actually go towards. You have to laser focus on that and really do it because it's not like we're getting any younger. No. You know, we are, when are we going to consider ourselves among those people, right? We have to just join them, start working with them. And if this can benefit anybody out there, I think me and Dan have gone through the ringer because me and you have been working together like on stuff like this for like, what, five years at least? Oh, yeah, bro. Like, been We've been grinding. Different, different projects, different ideas. A lot of spinning of wheels, man. A lot of learning. Totally. Really just a lot of learning, trying to figure out what will work and what won't work. And, and you know what? Even if it won't work, we're honing our skills and, and trying to figure out the direction we're going. We're constantly we can, opening different doors, though. Pa- and if we can pass on any knowledge that we've learned over over grinding and stuff like that like fuck those courses that'll tell you how to make a million dollars off doing what you want to do like they are doing that because that's what they want to do is make a lot of money that's part of their road it's, that's you know but like for us uh, uh, it's basically like don't overexert yourself by stressing yourself out with too many things like it's we all have to work day jobs until that uh dream becomes a reality yeah. so don't burn yourself out putting five different eggs in five different basket baskets learn what Dan's is saying and, and hyper focus on what you need to do. And if that means you want to have a podcast and you want to be a videographer like myself and you want to get into broadcast. So focus on, on doing your broadcast on the side hustle and working on film gigs and stuff like that, which I am hopefully starting up soon. But then also if you have a podcast, don't sweat too much of everything else. Just do the podcast for now. Do what you have time to do without burning yourself out. Do essentially that. What I'm saying that is super right because, yeah. and we, this is advice that I don't even know who it was that told us. I think it was like, Probably just Duncan Trussell, and I've said, you know, guys like that, I've said before, um, they'll they'll just say, like, everybody should have a podcast and start doing it right away. Don't even worry about, oh, I don't have microphones, I don't have headphones. I, you have a cell phone, probably. Yeah. Pardon me. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Indigestion. In, uh, but uh, <laughs> if, you, if you have a cell phone, you can make a little voice note, practice, listen to it back, go, oh, God, I hate my voice. Okay, I'd say it differently. Whatever it is, right? Or just... Maybe hang out with a friend and have coffee and be like, hey, do you want to record this one? We'll just sit there over tea, put our cell phone on record in the middle and see what we talk about. Yeah. Eventually work on just learning to forget about it and record what you're doing. Even if you just show your other friends uh, the highlights of the funniest things you said, maybe one night when you're drinking, hanging out, 
it's fun listening to yourself back. It's actually funnier. I find like when, with podcasts, it's actually kind of funnier to listen back than it was in the moment. We're making stupid jokes and I listen back and I laugh even harder than yeah, when I was totally. there. hundred percent. Like, I, I play it in my car and listen while I'm driving on long, yeah. longer trips. I don't care. Awesome. I don't care if that's egotistical or whatever the hell it's you want to call it. Like no. it's just literally enjoying. Uh, it's like recapping, hanging out with my friend. It's pretty yeah. rad. Like I think that once everybody tries it, they realize how much fun it was. I've never had anybody go, well, that sucked. And th- it's also one of the things that I've learned too is just look at the small wins. The small wins will really help you like thrive to grind it out because it does take yeah. a long time unless you know people. It does take a long time to make any of this reality. But the small wins that I love and I'm sure my homie over here, Dan, loves too is when you just – we invest in ourselves. We got um, a producer platform. AKA we use Podbean. And then you're on Spotify and then you're on Apple Music, blah, blah, blah. And then you look at even we get one download, two download, three. Dude, you said, yeah, I was going to say. That's the small wins I'm talking about. Shout out to our friend in India. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our voice traveled across the world. Dude, that's amazing. That's exactly why we do this, man. Hella. And that's what I'm saying. Just look at it. Like, don't look at it as like, oh, this is going nowhere. Oh, I only got 100 downloads in in a couple months. Like, what is happening? No, just look at it as small wins. And... And and eventually you just keep doing it. You keep grinding, pushing through. And I saw you have the world. I saw one post on Threads that has never left me, and this person has no idea that it affected me at all. But whoever it was, I don't even remember at all. It was a small account, but they said uh, I got twenty likes on my post, and I feel like a celebrity, and with like all this happy, exploding emojis and super happy and everything. And I'm like, so now every time. I get anything less than 20 or whatever. I'm kind of like, hmm, right? which is funny, <laughs> which doesn't really happen much anymore. Because right. some, some of my posts get upwards of 80, yeah. you know, and a hundred and stuff like that. And so now I'm looking at it going, Oh, why didn't it get 60? Why is it only at 40? Why is it blah, blah, blah? And I have to go, well, yo, these stupid numbers that you're pulling off each and every one of those is a human being, not only who saw it, cause more people saw it, but somebody saw my band's name in formation yep. and clicked. Yep. I like that thing you did. Even if it's just a picture of a rose or a quote that I said, that's stupid or, you know, weird, like a uh, synth wavy gif or whatever it is I put out there. They're seeing my name. They're constantly doing it. So even if it's one, like Respect. I should call that a, call that a win. It's a win. If you get 20, you should feel like a celebrity like this person. Yep. Now, if I get 50 likes, I'm like, that is amazing that I can take a picture with my cell phone Put it on the fucking threads and now 50 people can go, yeah, I like that. I can I can brighten up 50 people's moment to the point where they went, yep, even if it's just like super scrolly, yeah, whatever, scrolling, whatever. Even if it's just like that much, it's still kind of cool to me that people in the real world did that and they probably Engaging. saw the name of the band. Engagement, right? yeah, it's, man. It's just, too, I don't know, it's stupid. I'm just talking about no, it's, normal, regular, stupid engagement, but it's really all about how you look at it. It's, grand it's scheme a, of things. Yeah, That's, it's appreciating Each and every person who comes along. The little wins. Yeah, I don't care if it's 20,000 people. I want, you know, 100 amazing people, you know, like that really are there for it. Focus your mindset on on the little wins. Little wins are big wins. Yeah, that's right. Um, I have another segment um, to continue on from the last one. It's pretty good, I would like to think. A quick thing, a really quick thing before we do, because it kind of pertains to what we were saying. Go for it. As far as information goes, uh, a man, a businessman from Chicago listened to Information's song, and actually all of our songs that are so far released, inside of a golden pyramid in in a 24 karat gold pyramid um that's a that's a medium win dude, dude <laughs> isn't that medium that's bigger than little yeah, yeah that's bigger than little yeah but dude dude listened to it and made a post about listening to it in the, his favorite place to listen to it in the world shout out to milk toad society um he uh yeah he listened to it in uh, a golden pyramid because uh, he says that's his favorite place to in listen chicago. to music yeah, in, a, in a spa in chicago called king spa yeah nice shout out yeah. uh hello dude yeah that's a, that's, so see, that's a, trip, that's a medium win man what's that's a better and then he made a pro- post about it what's a what's a better commercial than a man listening to your music in a golden pyramid that's that's like a, uh, like just the fact that that even happened that's is a literal insane that's reality that's so man, anyway yeah. just wanted to share that little tidbit good for you that's reality. so sick um, so I okay. So we're going over to our AI story corner because I kind of like this AI story. Um, but I so I'm I'm, I'm using a different um, platform. It's called uh, I think it was called Form. Do you have your prompt available? Can I see um, one day? Don't have to worry about it right now. I'm just curious what you this did. one. No. So the last one when I put the prompt in, it showed the prompt. This one just like I put the prompt in remember. and it just it just fucked it up. I can kind of remember what I put in. Is it, but how I, long was it? It was a paragraph. Okay. Yeah, not just a sentence. Yeah. Sure. So I so this one I I attempted I to curious. do better. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it was basically, I'll, 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 I'll give you the spark notes of what I remember of the prompt. Okay, okay. Um, oh, wait, 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 no. Wait, do that after. Okay. We'll try to think about what, what they were when we're listening. Totally. That's actually a way better way to do it. So there this, we so, so we did, if you uh, listen to our last, there's a podcast in the woods. We uh, had an AI story generated. Uh, I put a prompt in. It was about a cat creature-like thing named Bismarck. <laughs> and he that dude was the life of the party he was the reason for the st- podcast success i think stole two people's podcasts essentially yeah. and crazy stuff happened what crazy oh, stuff wild. kept happening it wouldn't really tell us but that was my fault because i didn't prompt it well enough. it was so chaotic it was just chaotic i yep. remember it being and quite chaotic numerous times over and over they again really mentioned how chaotic it was, it was. Chaotic. so this one i did um another one i kind of like the ai story generator it's kind of funny i haven't read this yet so let's see if it's a little better i did a paragraph rather than a sentence of okay. uh, input, prompting. prompting. Uh, so chapter one, this is three chapter story. So chapter one is called A Jovial Journey. <laughs> the morning sun shone brightly over the colorful buildings of Little Italy. I stepped out of my home, taking a deep breath of the fresh air. It was time to begin my adventure. My grandmother's strange note had arrived just a week ago. In her loopy handwriting, she told of a secret relic from our past waiting to be found. It would lead me to the answer of a family mystery and a fortune of her riches. Of course, Grandma Elna was always one for mischievous riddles, but I knew there had to be more more to this quest. As I strolled through the bustling streets, waving to familiar faces, I noticed something wasn't quite right. Strange shadows seemed to dart behind corners and long forgotten alleyways, hissed with an eerie breeze. Shivering, I picked up my pace. Grandma's relic had to be found. Whatever specters lurked in wait. I think that's just New York, man. <laughs> <laughs> As much as specters everywhere. Yeah, just shadows darting around. <laughs> sketchy vibes. That guy's looking for a relic. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> All the relic hunters, a loopy handwriting. Anyway. Oh, man. Uh, leaving the city gates, I entered a twisting forest. What? They just p- pieced out the city gates of Little Italy into the forest? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh... A uh, twisting forest path. The trees grew dense, their branches joining overhead like gnarled fingers. An owl's unearthly cry sent a chill down my spine. Up ahead, a flickering lantern swayed in the breeze. Breeze. Though nobody was there, my stomach nodded as the lantern's light glinted off two arrow-like eyes peering from the dark. A cackle pierced the night, piercing as shattered glass. I froze my heartbeat pounding in my ears as a gaunt figure emerged. Pale skin clung to its skull-like face and bony fingers ended in talon-long nails. It grinned, opening a mouth lined with razors instead of teeth. Mark Zuckerberg? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) You bony bastard. (laughs) Oh, man. My, what a delicious-looking morsel you are. It rasped. I opened my mouth to scream, but no sound came out. Then a beautiful melody drifted on the wind, swelling like the tide. The specter screamed, clutching its head, then dissolved into the shadow. I blinked, rubbing my eyes, unsure of what I'd just witnessed. The singer, the singing grew louder, leading me toward a twinkling light in the distance. Jesus. I stumbled into a clearing filled with song. Dozens of spirits flitted through the air, the voices mingling in beautiful harmony. At the center stood a strange being, pouring her heart and soul into the lyrics of a folk song reminiscing of days long past. My eyes met mine, or sorry, her eyes met mine, (laughs) (laughs) filled with compassion. Do not fear, little one. You have wandered into a place of joy, not dread. The specter's still glancing at me curiously. What brings you to the forest at night, when the mortal souls quake at the mere whistle of wind through barren trees? Well, at least there's no dread here. (laughs) 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 Only joy. (laughs) Yeah, that was intense, though. Fine. I told her of Grandma Elna's quest and request. She nodded knowingly. (laughs) Your grandmother and I go back generations. She was always one for mischief and mystery. Her light laughter reminded me of wind chimes. Follow the past east from here. Holy shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm so sorry. Please put your finger and mark that. Yep. Is the word request because you're sending someone on something regarding a quest? Elna's quest and request. Yeah. Whoa, it's a quest and then you do a request, like you, you re- it's like a rebound, right? You do a quest for someone else. Can you, I request this? Oh, it's like a regarding request, a quest yeah. for going and getting me something. That's quest? fucking crazy. I bet it is. Uh, request. Anyways, go on. Follow the past east from here. You shall find what you seek at dawn. With that, the spirit 
resumed their elated singing and dancing upon the breeze. But that's just back towards New York. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid specter. God. Yeah. As I left the grove, their euphoric song lifted my heart. Whatever awaited was in Grandma's playful hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I would see the, this mission through to the end. So that was chapter one. Pee break. Pee break. We will be back after our sponsor for Melancholy Cola. I am not going to take a big toke. Right. Okay. Are you tired of the sugar-filled cola that makes your kids hyperactive? Makes me hyperactive. You get about two good hours and you got a sugar crash. 1936 called. They want their souls back. If you're like me and a million other Americans, go for the melancholy cola. Loaded with melatonin. Put you and your kids right to sleep. Drink it up. Settle down. That's the model. That's the melancholy cola. Are you back? Hello? We are back in action. Uh, Heavens to Murgatroyd. All right. So what do you think of the story so far there, Dan? I am enjoying it. I am being... uh, My consciousness is being whipped back and forth to cityscapes and twisting forests and bog witches and little I, Italy. I, I think my favorite yeah i think my favorite part i think i don't even know if my mic was close to my mouth whatever i think my favorite part there was the like vincent price motherfucker just exploding into like like he's just screamed and his face <laughs> melted off like he looked at the ark <laughs> and then, yeah, like, it's like, the, it's the spirit screamed the night and it exploded and then suddenly he's like going forward towards some like ethereal fairy goddess who's just like there's no dread here yeah, it was- only joy <laughs> like, oh like- I feel better now completely <laughs> that's nice <laughs> Good. Thank you. Yeah. Go east. Okay, sure. For your grandmother's quest, go east. Okay, sure. No problem. Back to New York, I guess. Yeah. Um, oh, go man. back. That's too good. Wait, Little Italy is in New York, is it not? I'm pretty sure Little Italy is a part of I think of, so, yeah. Maybe, or maybe there's yeah. Little Italy in other places too, but I think like it's. Like Chinatown? Yeah. Maybe. Everywhere's got a different yeah. other country. <laughs> it's, yeah. Little Beijing. Yeah. Yo, that's the dream where every country just has subsects of other countries. <laughs> yeah. So, world Victoria peace. is just, yeah, Victoria, that's what world peace looks like. It's like divided but in smaller. <laughs> just, <laughs> like, we have Chinatown, India Town, <laughs> Canada Town, there's US Town, there's Ireland Town again. <laughs> well, Ireland Town. Yeah. Stay off that block. Yeah, <laughs> man. On, on Unless you want to have fun. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. All right, here we go. Uh, chapter two is called A Haunting Discovery. I woke with the rising sun, shaking leaves from my tousled fur. <laughs> I didn't tell yep. you what the... But you'll figure it out. Still drowsy, my meeting with the spirits felt like a dream. Yet, as I stretched and glimpsed the eastern path ahead, I knew my journey was real. The trees gradually thinned, giving way to rolling emerald fields. Wildflowers bloomed in a rainbow of colors, stirred by silky butterflies and humming birds. A refreshed stream bubbled over rocks, and I splashed my face with cool water. Revitalized, I continued down the path with a spring in my step. Before long, a weathered fence emerged from the tall grass. Ivy crawled into crooked bones as if to reclaim the land. Whoa. Peering through, I glimpsed ruins overrun by wandering vines. Rotted boards marked where rooms once stood, and an intact stone chimney pointed skyward like an accusing finger. This had to be it. Grandma's secret home. Now an abandoned shell. Yet I knew in my heart she'd left something here for me. Something only I could find. Bracing myself, I squeezed through a gap in the fence and stepped into the yard. An eerie hush fell as twisting trees blocked the breeze. Boards creaked underfoot as I, as if complaining of my intrusion. I sensed eyes watching from the shadows, judged for disturbing the resting place. My hands grew clammy, gripping Grandma's note. Had I truly been guided right? A glint caught my eye from under a rotted stoop. Rushing over, I brushed away gnarled vines and dead leaves to reveal my prize. A box lay untouched by time, its brass hinges shining like new. With a click, it sprung open into my paws to show a single treasure inside. A rusty key with curious notches and symbols along its shaft. A tag tied to its bow. Bow read, cellar door, use with care. Ecstatic at my discovery, I laughed and pocketed the relic. The mystery was unfolding, giving rise to unanswered questions. Where did this special key belong, and what would it unlock when turned? My search began in earnest, scouring the decrepit house for any sign of entry. Boards creaked as I climbed crumbling steps, 
kicked aside scraps of wallpaper and yanked open cupboards empty by for cobwebs and dust. Nothing revealed a path downward, and despair began to set in. Say again? Sorry. Sorry again. So nothing nothing but cobwebs and dust were in the cupboards. Kicked and- aside scraps of wallpaper and yanked open cupboards empty but for cobwebs and dust. Yeah. Nothing revealed a path downward, and despair began to set in. To set in. So he's looking for the basement. Yeah. Okay. All seemed lost. Poking under a pile of rubble, my fingertips met something cold and metallic. Quickly pulling it open, a narrow door stood revealed, caked almost entirely in grime. Brushing it clear, the rusted plates of an old locking mechanism stood out. Heart pounding, I slipped the key inside and turned. With a groan, the door gave way, creaking open just enough to slip through into pitch black. As I fumbled for my small lamp, a dank, musky scent wafted out. Whatever lay before had been shut away and untouched for who knows how long. My adventure was only beginning. Bracing myself, I took the first step into the unknown cellar below. That was chapter two. That's chapter two. I like that one. That, holy shit. So this thing, has, this thing has robbed a lot of very good authors for this one. Really? This is, well, <laughs> listen to it, man. Yeah. That's some, like, really nice writing. There's, I mean, there's the... Poetic. Uh, there's, it needs editing. Yes, yeah, of course. This, this is, like, honestly, it needs editing. There's some things that need to be fixed and changed, but, like, goddamn, that's, uh, you know... Well... The, the chimney with the accusing, uh, like, an accusing finger. Yeah. It's like, hey, you robbed somebody of that. Yeah. Somebody wrote that, and that was cool. And then the floorboards complaining, as if complaining of my entry. I'm like, who wrote that? Somebody else wrote that. That's beautiful. so... It is beautiful. Yeah. You know, like, the AI, sure, it wrote quote unquote wrote that but really it's just taking slices right and it's stylistically very cool like i mean i don't know i can picture all the images i've been doing a lot of ai image art and i can picture how i would very pardon me very easily be able to illustrate this whole journey no problem yeah. and, it, and it would look very trippy and weird it, it honestly is it's playing out the words are playing out just like ai art kind of plays out with the the blending of things like this, the weird, like it'll give you whatever you wrote and it will blend it in a way that is, makes some semi sense. Like yeah. the weird, the like at one point it just said that there's Ivy twisting through bones. Like Super cool. I'm like, what is going like, yeah. I don't even know what's going on really. It's just a cool imagery, right? Like it's, it's randomization. It's gambling to see what comes out, you know? And like, then when it pit spits it out, like yeah. it's, it's taken the kind of the top percentage of the words and it's cool i like it so cool sentence so homeboy okay so just to be to recap here right he's made it uh just what what do you see it as because for me i see there's a guy who's obviously like lycanthropic like he's got like claws or paws or something he's noticing that they're just subtly putting that in there which is kind of neat just like i looked at my paws and blah 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 you're like what the fuck it's pretty cool i I like (laughs) that that literally it's not that that it's not like it's a, a it's like a kind of a weird way of revealing like it's kind of like a, what is going on because you're saying i so you should know but the reader doesn't know yeah so that's a really neat way that you could it's a cool device right Perfect. like it's a cool uh, thing to look down and see my claws and blah 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 and act like that's not a problem right now or a thing I know what I put in. Of course you do, but for but me, for you, this is perfect. Yeah, right. and I want I want to see if after, at the end of this, if you can, if, yeah. it, if so, it explains okay. enough too. So homeboy is in the kitchen. He's like, he's basically over the drawers and stuff. He's like clambering around looking for where the hell's the door to this basement, and he finds this thin sort of like metallic door that's just caked in grime, and, yeah. and manages to pull it open. And there's a, or get that shit out of the way, and then there's this intricate locking mechanism. Puts his old, the rusty, intricately carved key that he found into that, and is like my journey's just beginning so he's now in that's chapter dark. three starting yep. it's just dark in there for yep. now okay yep so number chapter three terry's in the house <clears throat> terry's in the house <laughs> terrors okay sorry. <laughs> terrors in the house my lamplight cast eerie shadows as i descended damp stone steps each breath summoned musty smells of soil and something thicker more metallic shivers traced my spine yet curiosity drove me deeper into the dark cellar the stairway twisted endlessly with no bottom in sight. Spiders fled my light while scuttling around, betrayed larger things hiding in the dark. Jesus. A shriek pierced the gloom, startling me into a, a misstep. My ankle <gasps> twisted as I hurtled down the remaining stairs, landed oh. with a thud and puff of dust. Oh, no. Gasping, no. I struggled to stand on my injured paw. My lamp had rolled away and its glow flickered faintly ahead. Limping towards it, I pass shelves of dusty jars, bending under their own weight. Bones and rusted <laughs> root. <laughs> heavy fucking jars. So heavy. What is that full bending of? Bending on under their own weight. Bones and rusted tools cluttered the floor amid cobwebs finer than the finest silk. At last, grasping my lamp, I swung its beam about in a panic. 
A low groan rose from the shadows, stirring ancient hungers long suppressed. Oh. My light fell upon a crumbling form emerging. Dry flesh stretched taut over jutting bones, socketed devoid of eyes yet filled with malice. A zombie shambled forward, rotten lab coat trailing in the funeral shrouds. Oh. Okay. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> A death scientist. Uh, uh, a zombie. His lab coat with the funeral shrouds. He was buried in his lab coat. Yeah. <laughs> he loved what he did. He always loved what he did. See, that's what happens when you become a doctor. You get buried in that shit, dude. He died trying to transform himself to look like Michael Jackson. And <laughs> no, that is so Scooby Doo. Looming yeah. out of the. <laughs> yeah. The zombie scientist. What? I would have gotten away with it too. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It lunged without, with, sorry, it lunged with outstretched talons as I scrabbled oh. back in terror. Sharp scratching echoed from deeper in the dark. More were coming. Corpses stirred from their long slumber, seeking warm blood and pulp to feast upon. Heart racing, I scanned wildly for an escape. I don't know why I thought they were all in lab coats. That's my bad. <laughs> They're just zombies. <laughs> They're not all doctor zombies. No, they, they, yeah, yeah, what's a cowboy zombie? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> A burst of adrenaline let me plunge past the zombie into suffocating black. Somewhere nearby, the dead stirred and gave chase with dragging feet. I dared not look back, following scratchy walls until my palms struck cold iron. Pushing with all my might, rusty hinges screamed and I tumbled into an adjoining chamber dimly lit by glowing mushrooms. Oh, cool. Wincing, I turned to bolt the door just as corpse's pale hand slapped against the other side. Their moans and scratches sent chills through my soul, but held for now by the bearing gate. Catching my breath, I took it in my new surroundings. Mushrooms of emerald and azure cast an eerie glow. Azure? Is that the right word? A azure. Azure? Yeah, it's blue. Cool. Cast an eerie glow over strange constru constructs crowded together. Glass containers held twisted embryos suspended in flickering liquid, while opening books penned horror... Horrors real and imagined. This had been a lab of some kind, long since crumbled into a monster's playroom. It's all horror section, but it's like nonfiction and fiction. Like, oh, Jeez. crazy! Uh, I'll stick King. to the fiction. That's right. <laughs> yeah. My leg throbbed with each shaken step through the mad scientist's workshop. Okay. Where was my grandma's treasure, and what sinister secret did the place hold? A flutter of parchment caught my eye. Notes scrawled in a dead man's hand, describing. Experimentation so deprived, I shivered to read them. D depraved? Depraved, I shivered to read them. Uh -huh. Yep. Only one passage stood unattained by the corruption sleeping from these walls. Numbers and symbols aligned in patterns speaking of order beneath the madness. Sliding the page into my satchel, I moved on with renewed determination. Answers were close. I could feel it. But so too were the new threats in Thrish Drilch Chamber. This eldritch, this, this eldritch, this eldritch chamber. Is that a real word or is that a made up word? It's just, um, it missed a space. It's this eldritch chamber. Ah, it did. There you go. Yep. This eldritch chamber. Welcome to chamber. Thistledritch chamber. <laughs> wow, man. Damn. This yeah. thing comes up with weird names. Okay, yeah. That's crazy shit. A glint ahead breathed new life into my failing lamp. Pushing through a gangly fern growing from cracks, I emerged into a natural cavern within the hideous lair. Sharp stones jutted from earth, packed hard as stone over untold years. And resting on a granite plinth like a relic was a simple wooden chest. My heart skipped as I threw open the lid, revealing rolls of documents, glittering gems, and gold, sil gold and silver coins spilled over. That is a very generic chest. That's what's in there? <laughs> yeah. There's got to be something gold. cool in here. Yeah. Digging around for whatever the fuck grandma's looking for. Yeah. It's just gold and silver. Stored her things so far away That's... and through so much danger. Yeah. You have to earn it, my child. Uh, at the bottom, a letter in Grandma Elna's whimsical scrawl told a fortune and a family secret long buried here. But my elation turned to dread as an inhuman shriek split the air. I whirled to a hulking beast emerge, more monster than man, sl slavering at jaws agape to reveal fangs caked in gore. A vampire, once humanity, now only feral hunger. It lunged at me with killer intent and my quest came into its most... What was the two words I texted you? Oh, what did you, what, what, what did you say? In its most... In its most perilous pass. 
And that's the end. That's where it, that's where it ends. The words perilous pass. It just like it made a picture and it covered up those words. I could see it on my computer, but I couldn't see it here. For for the PDF covered it up. Anyways. Why? I don't know. And that's where it ends. I, that's a pretty big cliffhanger. So now he's just met with a vampire. A, a vampire that's like a very large feral beast. It's like a wolf vampire. Yeah. With gore. In his mouth. After he just found old G Ma's gold and silver, her doubloons and okay, documents. So she's like, and her documents. Yeah. <laughs> what the f- <laughs> Okay. This isn't my grandma, anyways. So that right. that just was just a bunch of bunch of stuff. So nothing, nothing in particular. It's like it's like some I don't know. It didn't. So like the other, the, so the storyboard AI was the one I used before. Um, Wait, did you you do this on separate things? On different programs, yeah. All three chapters were on different programs. No, 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 no. Sorry, this one. No, the last story. Oh, I, did I see. Okay, so with this Bismarck. this one this time was. Uh, this was a different program. It's called like. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I'll, I'll remember the reason. Yeah. Forum.ai. No, don't worry about it. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, the story was called Whispers of the Forgotten Relic. Um, so, do you ha- I mean, the other one was very good at putting well, in. We don't know what, what the relic. We need a relic, though. That's that's what I'm bummed about. I, it just said there's a golden treasure, and you're like, all right, but what's the relic? Oh, so, uh, so it's going to be kind of confusing because this one took what I said and made a story of it where the right. other AI program. Um, literally just really pumped the words I used into every sentence. So it's like, okay. Because you gave see, it less. Because I gave it less, exactly. Right? It can't go in with anything. It yeah. has to just... Reiterate what I put in. Right. Because yeah. there's That's no... Other, yeah, it doesn't have any more ingredients. Um, so I will tell you. So this my, my prompt from what I can remember was a jovial cat named Bing Mark. Oh, you're talking about before. No, this one. This one. This is this is the prompt I used for this one. But it didn't, you, it didn't even say his name was Bing Mark. Well, it's, it's like, that's a dumb name. I'm not even going to use it. <laughs> it just edited it out for you. Yeah, it's, I just scrapped thank it. Thank you yeah. for not saying Bing Mark 80 times. <laughs> you're, you're disappointed by this? I mean, it's fine. A little bit. Um, yeah, it's a little a, bit. <laughs> a, a jovial cat named Bing Mark uh, uh-huh. strolls through Little Italy um, in, in a search for his grandma's relic. The relic that he found was an old key. That So the key was the relic. Uh, oh, okay. It was, okay, okay. was an old relic that would open a door in a haunted house he had then to, had to spend 24 hours in. And then I put, I, uh, I want creepy, spooky stuff to happen with zombies and vampires uh, along this way. How, how that first chapter that? was cool. You just said, I, I, I want it to No, no, no. I wrote, it, I wrote it out like fairly explaining. Right, right, right. Yeah, I didn't just like properly, it. Properly yeah. tried to prompt it, right. But it basically, but I just can't remember exactly what I typed. No, no. But yeah, it basically just uh, a cat that's uh, first he gets the key, then he gets the treasure from the haunted house that he has. First to you get the key, then you get the treasure. That's it. That's that's the tagline. But then yeah, you so get the power. I really did like the beginning part where he's like going through little Italy, and then he's like, yeah, in that forest, and it's just like this a skeleton comes out of nowhere, and he's just like, well, that was. He screams and like <laughs> er, like incinerates. <laughs> Like, it's so crazy. It's just like, ah! Well, that was very weird. Yeah. Okay, well, continuing on. And now there's some, which I would also think would be creepy, just some la, 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 girl singing folk music, and it's like, yeah. Come hey, on, my did, 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 did. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That's terrifying. Oh, man, yeah, but that was actually a lot better, and so you can basically, with this one, you get five chapters for free, and then the rest you have to pay. I did it in three chapters, so I can maybe do a two-chapter one next time, but, mm. but, um, I guess... It wasn't quite able to put everything I prompted into three chapters because it kind of like cliff it blue balled us, bro. Well, like, it anyway. doesn't know that, right? Though yeah. it's like golden treasure, and then there's a vampire, and then in the end, Shit, it's we gotta like, wrap this up. It yeah. doesn't know the tone of whatever. It's like we're done yeah. now. That's enough words, you know. Yeah. Like it doesn't. It tried <laughs> to make a conclusive. It, it, it even wrote it in a conclusive way, as though that was some kind of ending. But we're like, uh, yeah, what happened? You have to like probably say it ends with this. Probably, yeah. Right. I did you, not. You I did not write an tell ending. It, yeah, right? I didn't tell it what to end with. I just said in specific. You could put beginning, middle, and end points probably in there if you right, wanted. Right. Right. Not that I necessarily. I mean, this is one of those things that I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard, man, because it's just it's remixing. It's a robot remixing people's hard work. It's so crazy, right? Yeah. I wonder how much is it's genuine. Just you always got to always disclaimer. I think that's the one thing with yeah. AI is it's it's fun to play with, but just always try to disclaim it. Like. It, 
Yeah, yeah. If if anybody knows uh, who's listening out there, which uh, whoever it is, if you know of any of these familiar Dude, no one sentences, know. there's yeah. no way to know, right? There's how many? I guess nobody keeps thousands of people have written my head. Yeah. similar things to that, right? And then it steals a little piece from everybody, right? Yeah. Like a couple words. But I mean, at the same time, who's to say like if I come up with like a really cool um, comparison or what do you call it, analogy, and somebody hasn't said that a million times, but I didn't know. It's not necessarily copyright. It's just. But it, if a robot came up with it and then you heard it. And, oh, if a robot came up with it button, because it pulled it from something. If you hit then, a yeah. button or whatever, yeah, right. a couple buttons, and then now now it's – I don't know, right? It's all it's – all, it's weird. It's like how much automation are it's you looking fun. for? It's fun. Yeah, it just – yeah. I don't know. If we yeah. steal from artists, that's bad. People who drew, draw things. If we devalue crowns and jewels and gold, fuck them. Yeah. I'm down. Let's yeah. do that. Fuck that shit. It's only rare here on Earth. In space, that shit is dime a dozen. Yeah. There's it, jewels, gems, entire planets made of diamond. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Down here is where it's rare. So what we do is we flood the internet with pictures of it so people can become bored of it. It's not as valuable. The rich be- become less rich. That's the subtle direction I wish they... Because uh, think how subtle and evil it is to subtly steal art from hardworking drawers and artists. Right. But it's not that evil in my opinion to steal value away from museums with crowns and jewels and shit nope. fuck them nope nope I'm looking so for the I'll, day that we spend. I'll create AI that makes looks like gold and spaceships made of gems and diamonds that's Currency's what I'll do currency's gonna be 99.9 space bacteria <laughs> okay everything's freeze dried bacteria <laughs> freeze dried bacteria hella dude actually Brody sent me a, some some like evidence of that yeah, the book yeah. Dude, yeah I saw that too I know. Yeah. and I knew I know what he means but I don't know yeah anyways that was a dope one uh, okay love you guys peace out thank y'all. you these are my friends there's, There's a, podcast. a podcast in the woods. In the woods. Hello. Drink it up. Settle down. That's the model. That's the melancholy coil.